Okay, so there's an old interview I've watched from 1971 between Muhammad Ali and Michael Parkinson. Um, Ali, of course, is a very famous boxer. Um, I think most people have probably heard of him. I, I don't get, need to give much of an introduction. Michael Parkinson, if you don't know, is a well-known British television presenter. He's a long-standing BBC veteran. He's interviewed hundreds, probably, of famous people. Very experienced journalist. Um, so both heavyweights, I guess you could say, in their own field. Um, there's a few things I want to talk about in this interview. Some of the issues around it. Um, I have raised this before, and um, maybe I, I wasn't so specific in those videos, so I want to try and be more specific in this one. I think it's important to speak about it. Um, the title of the video I've just watched is Muhammad Ali the Greatest or a Racist. Um, now, the person who's posted it believes that uh, this video shows signs that Ali was a racist. Um, whether I can say he is a racist or whether he had racist attitudes, I'm not sure it's quite the same thing. Um, I think it's more likely the latter he had racist attitudes rather than he was a hardcore racist. I don't think he actually is a hardcore racist, but I do think he had racist attitudes. Now, there's two things I want to address: mixed relations, because that's what was brought up in this um, in this conversation between Parkinson and Ali, and um, also, for want of a better term, people worship or person worship, personality cult. Um, there is something, uh, especially in the boxing community, but even outside the boxing community that has put this man, Muhammad Ali, in a sort of um, bubble of being above scrutiny. It's something I've noticed on a lot of boxing forums and um, generally that there is this sort of sheepish worship of Muhammad Ali that is, to me, lacks objectivity and any sort of um, balance. Um, just to be clear about my own position on the man, this has nothing to do with his skills as an athlete. I, I do think he can rightly be called the greatest, certainly as a heavyweight. Um, the only people that come close really is Joe Lewis and, um, well, really, probably only Joe Lewis. Rocky Marciano, possibly, although there's some criticism as to the opposition Marciano faced because it were past the peak. Um, but, I think Ali would be either at the top or near the top of the greatest heavyweight, without question. I don't think he's the greatest boxer. I think possibly Sugar Ray Robinson has the edge. Um, but whatever way you look at it, Ali was an outstanding fighter. He was the best heavyweight in the best era of heavyweights. Um, he was a towering figure in the sport, remains so. Um, and it is right that he is recognised for that. So I'm not taking anything away from him as an athlete. I'm talking about skill. I mean, he, he had incredible elegance and grace for, for a heavyweight. I think it was said once he, he was a heavyweight who fought like a middleweight or even a lightweight. Um, he wasn't the hardest puncher, but he, he knew how to win. Um, he was an incredible athlete. And obviously, in a competitive sport like boxing, that is something to be admired. Um, but I'm not convinced he was a great human being. I, I'm just not. Some of the things, some of the attitudes that Ali had are, in my view, highly questionable. And the thing is, um, people always say, well, you need to look at the context of the time. For example, this interview was from 1971. It was still a time when the civil rights movement was still just about ongoing. There were still deep racial divisions in America. Um, so, yeah, I agree, context is important. But the issue here is that, from what I understand, I've never seen Muhammad Ali retract any of the sort of attitudes he held then. He may no longer be a member of the Nation of Islam, but he has never once, that I can see, said, um, you know, I was younger then, I was angry, and some of the things I said were wrong. If he comes out and says that, I would have a lot of respect for him. Um, one thing I will say about Ali, he, he had, it was a man of convictions, and... That is one aspect of him I do respect. I mean, the whole issue about the draft. Um, 
He refused to go to Vietnam on moral grounds. That's something that, in my view, is something to be respected. Whether you agree or not with his stance, the fact of the matter is he knew that there would be sanctions. He knew there would be um, a prison sentence. He knew he would lose the heavyweight title. So whatever way you look at it, I do think that that was um, a principled stance. Um, also, I think it's important to recognise the context of the time. So I'm not disputing that. Um, you know, feelings were raw. And I, I also think that the, for example, the Black Panther movement, which I don't know how strongly they were linked to the Nation of Islam, but I know the Black Panther movement was understandable because they were looking at the Martin Luther King philosophy of pacifism and they were saying this is fickle, it's not getting us anywhere. If, uh, I'll be honest, if I was a young black man in the 1960s or early 70s in America, I'd be tempted to join uh, the Black Panthers. I'd be, you know, and there were, was a movement called the White Panther Movement that supported them. Um, and actually, that brings me on to another point which I want to raise in all of this. Um, I, I've often seen it said from, and it was on this video, a lot of people, presumably black people, were saying, uh, how can white people possibly use the term racist against a black man, especially in the context of 1971? Well, my response to that would be, if your attitude is that all white people are the same, not only are you ignorant, but to me that is an absolute epitome of having a racist attitude. It's to hold an entire ethnic group as one. In other words, if you judge me as a white man, if you want to tar me with the same brush as um, the Ku Klux Klan, then of course I'm going to take issue with that. And I think that's the epitome of racism. Um, it's no better than saying all oh, black people are what, whatever the stereotypes white racists would use about black people. Um, there's a certain lack of honesty in all of this. Um, and I certainly think from white liberals there is a certain degree of um, pandering to, let's say, I wasn't going to say political correctness, but pandering to phony notions that you have to be guilty um, for something that's beyond your control. I, as a white guy, don't choose the colour of my skin. I'm not proud of being white, but nor am I ashamed of being white. Um, and I honestly believe there are some black people out there who feel that um, all whites should be treated as one and the same. All white, And th this is one aspect that really bothers me, because during the Civil Rights Movement, there was thousands, if not millions, of white people who actively supported the civil rights movement and this wasn't just like a convenient armchair thing like oh yeah we agree with it in principle in many cases they took serious personal risk to do so don't believe me look at the case of the two um, white civil rights workers killed in Mississippi um, along with a young black man that was the inspiration for the film Mississippi Burning that proves that white activists face real risks as well from extreme white racists um, a bit like uh, if I was given equivalency in apartheid era South Africa, black people who were suspected of um, cooperating with the apartheid regime suffered the so-called necklacing practice. Um, and to his credit, Nelson Mandela condemned that later on, and he uh, he did try to rein in on it. Winnie Mandela didn't, but. Um, what all this comes down to is if you truly claim to be anti-racist. If you truly, in your heart and soul, believe your words when you say, I am opposed to racism, by extension then you have to acknowledge that judging an entire ethnic group as one is ignorance, and it is a racist position to hold. So I saw statements can sort of um, making excuses for Ali's attitude by saying, if you were a black man and the white man treated you like this, you would have the same attitude. Well, if I was Muhammad Ali or any other black man, of course I would feel angry. But I would also, as knowing myself, I would be objective enough to recognise that not every white person is the same. And that's where Ali was wrong. And that's where a lot of uh, the black power people were wrong back then. They saw all white people as one and the same. That's where they were fundamentally wrong. Malcolm X realised that and he later changed his direction to be more um, broad reaching to his credit. Um, I think... Ali probably has moderated since that time, but he's never expressed regret for it. Now, there's something that is really, and I do want to talk about this one, because this is something that's very personal for me, 
it is the issue of mixed relations. What Ali was saying in this interview, he, he made it very clear that he opposes mixed relations. He was saying, there's nothing wrong with being proud of your uh, who you are. Well, I agree, there's nothing wrong with that. But then he went on to say, if you're a black man, um, you know, you're not going to be with a white woman. If you're, I think the analogy he used was, if you're a Puerto Rican woman, you're not going to be with a Chinese man. Because the Chinese man would want Chinese music, the Puerto Rican woman would want Puerto Rican music. But Ali is completely missing the point with this. He misses the beauty of mixed relations. That it is about a blending of cultures. Um, I have to be honest, this is something that really um, bothers me, whether it's coming from Muhammad Ali or anybody else. And I personally take issue with that. I'm a white guy who has been with Asian women in the past. Not, that makes it sound like I'm a womanizer. I've been with two, two Asian women at different times. Um, no, I do take that personally. My attitude is what right has Muhammad Ali got to dictate to anybody who they should and shouldn't be with? If he chooses to be with black women, good luck to him, best wishes. But he has no right to dictate and moralise what other black men should and shouldn't, who they should and shouldn't be with. Personally, I really couldn't care less if a black guy is with a white woman. As long as they respect each other, I wish them well. The same applies to any other ethnic group and I demand... I don't ask, I demand the same thing of myself. Um, I, I really can't understand people who have a problem with this. It's different if, you know, um, there is abuse going on or there is such a cultural clash that it is leading to significant problems. Um, that might be different, but the actual principle of it is absolutely fundamental. It's about two human beings being in love or being in a relationship and it's no one else's business but theirs. So when Ali had this attitude about mixed relations, I don't know how anyone could possibly claim that's not a racist attitude. It is. It's not like he's saying personally I prefer black women but I respect other people's right to be with who they want. No, he's dictating. Watch the interview and I'll put a link to it here. He is dictating. This is a thing. So to anyone who comes on this video and says, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, I challenge you to watch that video and tell me that his attitude to mixed relations wasn't racist, when it blatantly was. You know, Ali's attitude was all about preserving uh, black people, but it was based on paranoia, because black people weren't going to go anywhere, nor are white people, to white racists who think that's going to be the case. Just because some people happen to be in mixed relations doesn't mean it's a threat to the entire race. Um, you know, and then he was saying, like, uh, you want a crossbreed. And Parkinson came out with something quite clever. He said, I think that's a, a world outlook of despair. And he got a round of applause for that. I think Parkinson was right. I think Parkinson really did raise a, good, a lot of points there. Because Ali came across as angry and frankly very misguided one point he tried to compare birds to humans he said you know if you have different birds flying around um, what would it be like if they're mating together but the difference here is human beings are not different species you get different skin pigmentation and you get different cultures but we are all homo sapiens we're not a different species that's a scientific fact and if you cut someone's arm they bleed red whether the Chinese black or white so, a lot of Ali's thinking, I think, should be challenged at that time. Now, again, even understanding the context, I don't think he's got any excuses, because he was a public figure, he was in a position of responsibility. And a lot of Ali's attitude, not just to white people, but to other black fighters, was frankly disgraceful. He shamelessly called Joe Frazier an Uncle Tom, never expressed remorse for it, from what I understand. He never said, I should not have said that. And it wasn't about hyping fights up. This was politicising something that was deeply sensitive, especially within the black community. He was basically presenting Joe Frazier as a stooge of the white establishment. And the truth couldn't have been further from reality. In fact, um, Joe Frazier had much more of a, I guess you would say, a typical black background. Ali, by the way, was from a middle class, uh, quite privileged background. Yes, he still suffered racism, but, you know, his attitude to Joe Frazier was disgraceful. And it wasn't Joe's Fra Joe Frazier's fault that he got stripped of his title. 
you know, Joe Frazier tried to stay away from politics and um, he even offered Ali money um, during that period. So I think, how did he reciprocate? He called Joe Frazier and Uncle Tom. And, um, you know, I can understand Ali being angry with fighters who continue to call him Cassius Clay. I can understand that, but a lot of his attitudes to fellow fighters were, you know, you could say it was um, fun, but I also think he introduced a culture of disrespect, which I don't think is an asset to boxing. Okay, it's good to have hype in a fight. I agree with that, and you don't want fighters who are going to have a cup of tea together. It is good, to, you know, it's good for marketing. I get that, but a lot of Ali's attitudes I don't think were particularly good for the sport. Uh, I mean, the whole trash talking business. Sometimes it was funny and witty, but sometimes I think he crossed the line. Um, and I don't respect that. I respect him as a fighter. He was unquestionably courageous, but then every fighter is. Um, I mean, take for example his rumble with in the jungle. He openly uh, encouraged the crowd to shun Ali Bumbaye, Ali kill him against uh, George Foreman. George Foreman, I find, is a very gracious figure, but um, you know that's hardly sportsmanlike. So there's a lot of areas where Ali, I think, is should be um, scrutinised. And, you know, people, maybe it's to do with um, sympathy, because obviously he's in a, he's frail now and he, he has Parkinson's, but, um, you know, that shouldn't be, well, I, I really have a problem with this idea that anybody is above crit critique or scrutiny. You know, there's individuals I have a lot of respect for, but anybody I can think of that I have a lot of respect for, someone wants to criticise them, I would be open-minded enough to recognise what they are saying. I might not agree with it, but I I think the problem is some Ali fans really do treat him like he is above all scrutiny. Um, and, you know, I've seen things like, um, well, if you're saying all these things, you know, say it to his face or get into the ring with him or whatever, this has nothing to do with his athletic ability. I think he's an outstanding fighter. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with legitimate questions about his personality. Because when I hear things like he, he's a great human being and a great man, I think, well, hold on a second. Was he really a great man with the sort of attitudes that he had? Was he a unifying figure? No, he wasn't. Let's not forget, in the 70s and late 60s, Ali was a deeply, deeply divisive figure. Now, I do acknowledge there's been transformations in 1996 he was a very unifying figure when he appeared at the Olympics. All I'm saying is that when people analyse Ali, I think they're blinded by, it's sort of like, what's that expression, um, uh, starstruck. It's almost like because he is so famous, they almost are brainwashed into this idea that any criticism must be wrong. Ali is a human being like anyone else. Let's stop pretending otherwise. Just because he's a great fighter and just because he, he was witty, I don't think he was that intelligent, actually. I think some of the things he came out with were rather stupid. Um, so, I'll be honest, I am not a massive Ali fan. I wouldn't say I dislike the man intensely. It's not, This is not a hate video. You know, I don't hate him. But I just don't believe, as a boxing fan, that everybody should be expected to worship the ground he walks on. Um, you know, boxing fans should have the freedom to like whichever fighters they like or dislike. This idea that if you're a boxing fan, you have to love Ali is a bit phony, I think. Um, and, you know, I, I'm aware that he's frail now. Maybe, maybe he's not got long left. So this is not intended as a hateful video. Ali's achieved great things with his life. And um, I'm sure he has many positive merits. All I'm saying is that a lot of the claims that are made about him border on sycophant. A sycophantic attitude. And uh, I don't like it at all. I don't like that with anybody, actually. With any historical figure. The idea that anybody is above criticism is absurd. So, if you disagree with me, I would say, well, okay, but do look at that video. And then consider, if you were 
someone who has been in a mixed relationship, how would you honestly feel about his statements? It's not like Ali was, um, you know, people talk about the context, but it's not like Ali knew, didn't know that there weren't white people supporting civil rights. But he chose to take the divisive route. He chose to treat all white people as one and the same. Uh, certainly at that time, maybe not so much today. And like I say, I think he probably has um, moderated, and that's probably why he's got a lot of respect. But all I'm saying is, when I see sort of sweeping statements like Ali was perfect, I love Ali, and for stuff like this, it's it's phony. You know, I like Manny Pacquiao a lot. He's probably one of my absolute top fighters. But I'm not going to say that Manny Pacquiao is perfect. I'm not going to say as a human being he's perfect. And I'm sure uh, there would be legitimate criticism against him or against anyone. Um, so, uh, I don't think it's good for the sport that one figure can be so idolised to the point where there's no objectivity. And I do hope, um, I don't want to sound morbid with this, but I do hope when, when Ali's time comes, when he passes away, Ring Magazine gives an objective outlook on him and doesn't just give an absolutely blind appraisal of um, his life. Because there are many, many people who don't agree with this attitude. This idolatry, basically, is what it is. Um, so just in conclusion, Ali is a remarkable person. He's an icon in terms of culture, in terms of sport. Um, I do acknowledge that. And he's probably the greatest heavyweight who ever lived. Um, great person. I think it's questionable. I really do. He's a remarkable person. He's a famous person. He's uh, he's had many achievements. But let's stop pretending that um, you know. Let's stop making excuses for some of the attitudes he had because there are no excuses. If you oppose mixed relations and you try to dictate to others that they shouldn't be in mixed relations, that in my book is racism. Full stop.